The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the tearing down of strongholds. All right, listen to me. The gifts of the Spirit have a target. Look me right in the eye. They have a target. I'm going to call it an aiming device. I was privileged to know uh, Jackie Yockey, who she's going to choke when she hears that I mentioned her. Jackie Yockey's a dear friend of mine. She's a widow. Her husband was a captain in the Navy, and Captain Yockey was the scientist behind Raytheon's Tomahawk missile. That missile was scary. I think I saw that missile stop at a red light in the Middle East, wait for it to turn green, and then turn right. And it's lethal because it knows how to find its target. So I asked him one day, what is the secret of the Tomahawk missile? What makes it so dangerous? He said, well, it's not the firepower. He said, we have lots of missiles that know how to explode. He said, it's the aiming device. And I said, why is that so lethal? He said, well, it will decode the metal of its target and know where it is and find it and blow it up. And then I'm walking. So I asked him, I said, well, how does it work? And he said, well, I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> so how many of you know there are things I'm not that interested in? <laughs> so I left, and I hear this phrase in the spirit. The nine gifts of the spirit have an aiming device. When they're pointed in the right direction, the power will rise. So I asked Captain Yaki, what happens to a Tomahawk missile that doesn't find a target? He said, it, it, it'll be harmless. It'll fly until it runs out of fuel and fall to the ground. That's what's going on. We're prophesying over each other. We're praying in tongues over each other. We're praying for each other's sickness, and that's valid. We're discerning each other's spirits. We're looking for devils that are the safe devils, the ones that are in church. And somebody help me right now. But if someone deliberately says, I'm going to shut down the crack house in my neighborhood, let me tell you what's going to happen. The Holy Ghost is going to come on you. He's going to come on you and say, you know what? We're in this together. Now you're talking about power. How serious was Catherine about this? She had prayer cards, not used like the spurious evangelists would. But she knew when delegations would come to her meetings, she would never allow the same group of people to sit in the front. And she wanted the hard cases in the front. Most evangelists want to hide the hard cases in the vestibule and work on the headaches and the stiff necks and the nostril that needs opening. Oh, somebody over here, their nostril needs... Man, that's a real deal right there. Just take a deep breath. And they think that by testing the waters on those things that they can work their way up to diseases. Catherine would put the worst cases in the front because she knew, she knew, look at me, she knew that the anointing would target strongholds of Satan. So here's revival. God's, you asked God, and God said yes. The next question should have been, what do you want me to do now? And no matter what it looked like, you do it. So now we're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit real fast. Because again, the idea here is to cure the body of Christ in California of virtual reality, spirit-filled living. To get real. To get the real, not the false. Get the, med the medically confirmed miracle. The actual prophecy. The true conversions. A church... You know, when a baby is born, Pastor, you don't look at how big it is. You count the toes, fingers, eyes, and ears. Because the issue for you is the health of the child, not the size of the child. And that's why we have big churches where pastors have been 
totally unconcerned about whether it's even healthy or not. Now, let's see this. It could cost you your marriage. An unhealthy church could kill you. An unhealthy church will not let you sleep. An unhealthy church will have an enormous, outsized, carnal obsession with your attention, and they won't be connected to Christ. When they're connected to Christ, your maintenance level goes all the way down, and your productivity level goes all the way up until finally you realize, you know what? Jesus just took over my church, and he's doing a pretty good job. Now, let's talk about miracles. Moving on fast. My hero is Miss Kuhlman when it comes to signs and wonders. Oh, it's not just the healings. Her healings were off the chart. I, I was involved very often in the Shrine Auditorium when she was there for 10 years. I saw children with polio, their legs change, get up, take off braces and walk and Incredible miracles. Never thought I would live to see the day when those things would start happening in our meeting, and when they did, it terrified me. But watch what I noticed about Catherine. She talked about death to self all the time. I never saw anyone talk about death to self all the time. You could ask her about anything. You know, what's a good car to buy? Well, first, you have to die to self. to pick a good car. It was like that. Now that is an unpopular message. You see, one day St. Francis of Assisi went to visit the Pope and the Pope wanted to brag to St. Francis about all the wealth of the Catholic Church. Showed him the sculptures, the paintings, the priceless art and all the wealth and the money and the gold that they had. And then he joked to St. Francis. He said, no longer can the church say, silver and gold have I none. And he said, and neither can she say, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Now, here it comes. The weapons of our warfare, say it with me, are not carnal. All right, stop there. What did I just say? If we're not dealing with carnality, we're not dealing with the power of God. If we're not dealing with ego and the management of flesh and the need for pride and arrogance and all this attention, but when we see arrogant ministers on YouTubes almost inadvertently telling you that it is their audacity and their, their, pom their pompousness and their roosterness that is causing God to use them when it's a lie from the pit of hell. Man, I've seen preachers that were so arrogant they could strut sitting down. <laughs> you can't unsee that and you know it. <laughs> is anybody getting anything about what I'm saying right now? Let, let's talk about, just for a moment, signs, wonders, and miracles. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We're not going to have the weapons of God if we leave the subject of carnality out. If you're building your ministry on the shuck and jive, run a deal, make a connection, give me, give me your card, call me, let's talk together, we can make this happen. As long as that's on you, you you're, going to, you're going to tread water. The minute that you say, all I want to do is what Jesus says. My wife will tell you about me. I learned this from my heroes. I have three, Oral Roberts, Catherine Kuhlman, David Wilkerson, and of course, Dr. Graham. But being an evangelist, one of the things that, that I learned from all of them is every single one of them guarded their afternoons tenaciously. See, I would travel. I don't travel as much anymore because I'm watching God do miracles in very select places. But I will not, I'm not there to, to sample the cuisine of New Orleans. I'm not there for you to take me on the tower up in Toronto. I don't want to see the arch in St. Louis. 
And as much as I loved the Yankees at one time in my life, I don't need to see Yankee Stadium when I'm in New York. What I need to be is in my room letting Jesus defeat Mario Murillo. Watch me now. Letting Jesus defeat Mario Murillo. Because if Christ can defeat Mario Murillo, Mario Murillo can stand up and defeat the devil. So if God is allowed to take it to me, I'll be able to take it to the devil. 